Hey, what's good, my fellow masters? Just a few more days until the second act of Avalon Le Fay is unlocked, and with that, the expectation of the third summoning banner for LB6, featuring Tam Lin Lancelot, or Melusine, and Percival. I know that many have been prioritizing this particular banner in order to summon this small but incredibly powerful SSR Lancer, even over the likes of my beloved Queen Morgan. To that, I say, how could you? But seriously, I'm super hyped to finally be getting Melusine on NA, and she is definitely way up there on the list of servants to roll for. Now, I realize that many watching will probably already have a good amount of info on Melusine, but for those of you that may not be all too familiar with her, hopefully this overview of her will bring you up to speed to help determine how Melusine could fit in with your servant roster and if you should prioritize her. I won't be going over every little detail and will mostly discuss the main things I find that can make the biggest impact. So to start things off, we have the featured SSR, the Limited Lancer class Tamlin Lancelot, or I'd say more commonly referred to as Melusine. Melusine? Melusine? You, you get the idea. One of the big four of highly anticipated servants for 2023, she is a servant quite unlike any other. And by that I mean Melusine has both a single target noble phantasm and an AoE noble phantasm, something no other servant can claim. Well, up to this point anyway. As you can see from here, her card deck consists of two buster, two arts, and a single quick card, usually considered a fairly balanced deck type. Melusine having two arts and two buster cards will play into enhancing her potential NP brave chain damage and effectiveness, but that will become more apparent when we look at her MP. Overall, her card hit counts are on the better side of things with three hits on her buster and arts cards, a decent figure, plus a nice four hits on her quick card, and Melusine's extra card comes in at a very good five hits. Her base attack stat at level 90 is 12,154, which is pretty good for an SSR in general, and quite good among the 5-star Lancers coming in at 3rd highest behind Vritra and Romulus Kyrinus respectively. The base HP stat side of things at level 90 is 14,114, a figure I would say is pretty healthy that should ensure survival from one of those random focused enemy attacks complete with an unlucky crit. But those situations should be few indeed since Melusine tends to lay waste to all before her, if appropriately supported. Jumping into our active skills, the first one starts things off on a pretty strong note. It increases Melusine's attack for 3 turns, ranging from 20% to a very potent 40% at max skill level. It also provides her with a damage reduction of 500, plus a boost to her already fairly high max HP, scaling from 1000 to 2000 both effects also lasting for 3 turns. And to top things off for this skill, an NP battery of 20-30% to 30 when maxed. All of this on a cooldown of 6 turns at skill level 10. At this point you may be thinking, cool, a 30% battery? Unlock and level up her mana loading a pen and Melusine can essentially start with a 50% charge, right? Well, yeah, but there's a bit more to it, involving her third skill which we'll get into. Moving on to our second skill, it's all about the critical stars. Melusine's absorption of stars is massively increased by up to 5,000% for 3 turns. To match, she also gains up to 10 crit stars per turn for 3 turns, plus an immediate gain of up to 10 stars to make use of right away. As for the cooldown, it's a relatively short 5 turns at skill level 10. Now, if these effects seem kind of familiar, then it's basically an amalgamation of partial effects from all three of the skills of her male counterpart, Saber Lancelot, but wrapped up all nice and neat in her second skill. And then we come to Melusine's third skill, effectively the linchpin to her capability of having a single target and area of effect Noble Phantasm. There are slight differences depending on Melusine's ascension stage when this third skill is activated. When she's in her first and second stage ascension, a couple really cool things happen. She changes into her third stage ascension, and her NP gauge is charged up ranging from 50% to 100%. So yeah, Melusine basically has two NP batteries under certain conditions, and the kicker is the battery on this third skill is a built-in MLB kaleidoscope. Oh, and 
This skill also gives Melusine a one turn invincibility for some survivability. Now, how does this play into our single target and AoE MP? Very briefly, when Melusine is in her first and second ascension, her MP is single target, and in her third stage, it changes to area of effect. Thus, you can start off with her single target MP and then switch to her AoE as needed with this skill, complete with a full MP gauge. Such a cool ability. Of course, there is a caveat to this. The ascension change just goes in one direction. There's no back and forth between her ST and AoE MP, unfortunately, because that would be really broken. You know, as opposed to Melusine being only kinda broken with this slight limitation. If this tiny fairy of destruction is already in her third ascension when this skill is used, then instead of an MP charge, she gains an increase to her NP damage of up to 30% for three turns, along with the one turn invincibility that's common regardless of her ascension stage. And with just a five turn cooldown for this skill at max level, the likelihood of using it at least twice in a battle is pretty good, especially if you're utilizing a double coin Skya team configuration. Taking a look at Lollilot's passives, there are just two. A 17.5% increase to her debuff resistance, and a 9% increase to her arts performance to help boost her arts cards. Briefly touching on Melusine's appends, there are of course the extra attack boost and load magical energy first and second appends, common to all servants. As for her third append, it will provide extra damage against other Lancer class enemies, scaling from 20 to 30%. Something that could be nice to have if your intention is to use Melusine as more of an Omni attacker, but definitely more of a luxury when taking Serving Coin Supply into consideration. Which brings us to Melusine's Noble Phantasm, or rather Noble Phantasms. Her single target NP is arts based and consists of 5 hits. As previously mentioned, she has to be either in her first or second ascension in order to utilize it. It has a couple of effects as well, a 5 turn debuff to the enemy target that increases the damage they take by a flat 1000, plus a star bomb effect dropping 10 critical stars. The overcharge effect for this MP activates first and boosts her NP gain rate 20% to 40% based on the level of overcharge. This will come super handy, complementing Melusine's base NP gain of a fairly decent 0.65%, plus that 9% arts performance increase from her passives to give her back some NP refund for viable looping potential. Naturally, to reach that potential, a Castoria or two would undoubtedly be involved, along with an appropriate craft essence and such. But none of that arts looping refund shenanigans for Melusine's AoE NP. It's all about the press red for dead buster damage. It too is 5 hits with a couple of effects a one turn ignore invincibility that activates first, and it will also inflict 1000 burn damage on targets which will last for 5 turns. And here is where things get interesting in my opinion. The overcharge effect for Melusine's AoE MP is a buff to her buster performance that activates first and lasts for 3 turns. Depending on OC level, the buff ranges from 20% to 60%. I love these types of NP overcharge effects since the damage will increase with each subsequent wave in a 3 wave 3 turn tactic. And in Melusine's case, by the time of her NP on the 3rd wave, that buster increase would have reached a combined 60%, assuming there weren't any boost to her OC. Now imagine her being fully supported with a Black Grail Craft Essence, Double Coin Skya, and Oberon for good measure, and well, Melusine's overall AoE NP damage potential is very high. What I really like about Melusine is how her whole kit comes together and offers a tremendous amount of versatility. If you happen to be lacking either a strong single target or AoE SSR Lancer, this Tamlin version of Lancelot could effectively be all you need to cover those roles, and then some. She has self buffs for her attack and NP damage, modest ways to increase either her arts or buster performance to match which NP she's using, she has a few ways to supply herself with critical stars and absorb them, and then there are her NP batteries. Her AoE MP can deal with those pesky enemy invincibility or evade buffs, and she has a way to survive an enemy's MP attack. Not that it should come into play that often, as she is more of a kill the enemy before they can fire it off type of attacker. 
Granted, the base damage for a single target and AoE MPs are not the most powerful, but don't misunderstand, they're not weak. Her base ST damage averages come in around 6th from the top among single target lancers, and her base AoE MP damage comes in around 4th from the top after the 6th anniversary rank ups. Quite respectable when considering Melusine's own self buffs in isolation. So she won't be the absolute most powerful ST or AoE lancer out of the gate, especially when compared to other lancers with niche modifiers like Skaha's anti-divine anti-undead or Karna's anti-divine extra damage on his MP. But that's okay, her overall base MP damage is good, relatively speaking. And there is just something to be said when you can have one main attacker deal with most, if not all, of those 90 plus irregular format nodes. You know, where you would usually need an ST attacker plus an AoE attacker to split up the enemy waves. Of course, the addition of Koyan Sky of Light and Oberon will provide many servants with the capability of dealing with the 90 plus nodes as the sole attacker. But in Melusine's case, she has an interesting advantage. Her third skill's 100% NP charge can effectively replace the K-Scope plus mana loading a pen combo normally required to start things off for the three-turn buster farming with Double Coin Skya. And since she doesn't need the K-Scope, the CE options are opened up, with the powerful Black Grail typically being the CE of choice. This will obviously greatly enhance Melusine's MP damage when used with Coin Skya and Oberon ideally. Though what's great about Melusine is that Double Coin Skya is not actually needed to make this work. One Coin Skya, Oberon, and another 50% charging support unit can work as well. From my JP account, I don't have Melusine, so I borrowed one and teamed her up with my Summer Scotty, Coin Skya, and Oberon to farm the recent 90 plus Lotto farming node. So as long as you have Melusine and either a Coin Skya or Oberon of your own, plus another 50% charger, 3 turn buster farming is fully within Melusine's grasp. And remember, buster farming negates any issue of how many enemies there are in each wave, so eat your heart out, art sloopers. So what's the bottom line? Should you prioritize Melusine over either Coin Skya or Oberon? Well, if she's captured your heart and you've been set to roll for her above all else for months, then the answer is obvious. It does help to know that you could technically get away with either Koyanskaya or Oberon to make Melusine work if SQ is relatively tight. I do think that if you find your current Servant roster lacking a strong ST or AoE Lancer, or both for that matter, Melusine is definitely worth summoning. Even if you have a strong Lancer lineup already, I feel she brings a lot to the table gameplay-wise that trying to add her to your Caldea is not wasted. But Perhaps the key point is summoning for her eventually. As my JP account example illustrates, you could also get away with borrowing a friend's support Melusine if you have your own coin Skya and Oberon. And the advantage here is that having coin Skya will enhance all of your buster units, along with providing an alternative three turn farming tactic. And as for Oberon, he is capable of enhancing all of your servant teams, whether quick arts or the buster ones, especially. So setting aside favorites and just considering gameplay, it's my opinion that Coin Sky and Oberon be prioritized over Melusine. This is assuming that you don't have 2700 quartz saved up in some fashion to ensure at least hitting pity for all three of these servants. But the good news is that Melusine will have another banner at the end of this year, allowing around 6 months or so to save up more SQ and tickets for that time. And if you're so inclined, there's also the paid SQ GSSR during the 6th anniversary where Melusine should be one of the banner options. I think I'll be having my alternate account take a chance on getting Melusine this way, but I haven't quite decided yet. Again, I do think Melusine is definitely a servant to summon for. She is incredibly good and will greatly improve anyone's servant roster. Though it basically hinges on what your SQ and ticket situation is like, because I feel it's more important to have either Coin Skya or Oberon over her. So those are my thoughts on Tamlin Lancelot, aka Melison. I usually don't do a singularly focused overview on an upcoming servant, and mainly do a very condensed version within a related guide video. But I found Melusine to be such an interesting servant, I ended up trying out one of these. Truth be told, I had also wanted to do one for Morgan as well, before her banner drop, but unfortunately, I couldn't make my schedule work. 
I am considering doing one for Koenskaya and Oberon and perhaps beyond if the feedback warrants it. So please let me know what you thought about it. And of course, if you enjoyed it, hit that like button. That will be a good indication to me if I'm going in the right direction. A quick reminder that there will be a Caldea broadcasting stream on June 19th at 1800 PDT, and it's a first volume light edition at that. No doubt the topic will revolve around Act 2 of Avalon Le Fay, but I'm thinking we may get some info on a 6th anniversary pre-release. Maybe? Hopefully? At any rate. I'm looking forward to the stream and naturally being able to continue the LB6 story in Act 2. Thank you as always for watching, and until the next one, cheers!